Now, last question I want to ask you about is, what is your thoughts in terms of um, Christian hip hop? Um, a lot of it, in my opinion, is not really centered around urban apologetics, um, addressing some core issues of the culture. And uh, I think a lot of that has to do with theologians that they admire. And these, a lot of these theologians, yeah. though they're solid, they, yeah. they're not really into you know the urban the apartment. Right, right, exactly. So I, I want to get your thoughts on that. How, how what, what would you say to maybe uh, encourage or challenge uh, you know the Christian hip hop community in that area? The Jews did a lot with manna in the desert. They baked it, they fried it, they they twirled it, they rolled it, they did all kinds of stuff. I mean they did everything you could imagine with manna, you know. Uh, and, and, and finally they got some quail and they, and they gorged themselves and almost got sick. But anyway, I see the Christian hip hop. First of all, I am very much in favor of Christian hip hop. Okay. Uh, I, I think uh, it, it is a great uh, phenomenon that's happened uh, and it's doing a lot of good. And so uh, I applaud them. I encourage uh, the hip hop artists. Uh, a lot of them are embracing this real good, robust theology. Um, and uh, so I, I, I do appreciate them a great deal. And um, again, however, <laughs> okay, uh, here, here's 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 my concern. All right. Uh, imagine a a rectangle, okay. Okay. And let's say, remember, I talked about the two sides, of, two sides of theology, mm -hmm. the, the, the the epistemological and the ethical. Correct. The epistemological take, takes up two thirds of the rectangle. Mm -hmm. The ethical takes up two thirds of the rectangle. So you have a third slice there where where they overlap. Now let's let's change the cast of characters. Let's talk about the dominant cultural perspective on theology. Subdominant cultural perspective on theology, same overlap. Mm -hmm. These hip hop artists are seeing the the value and the relevance of theology as it now as it now exists. But the problem is, it's Western theology, and Western theology is primarily on the dominant cultural side. But they see where it overlaps, and that really speaks to them in the subdominant context and they're going for it and that's a good thing what these guys don't realize is that there's a whole nother aspect of theology from the subdominant culture that has not been done yet that they need to do or they need to get together with somebody who does do it because it would you know as powerful as they are their 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 power would, would increase tenfold if they learn how to you know explore some of those unexplored areas of the implications of theology. I hope that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Okay, now the second thing is this, and again, I appreciate their work. It's a great thing. I mean, you know, I want to cheer them on, and I want to do anything I can do to help them, all right? But uh, again, they're, they're, they're taking off on Western theology, and what, there's nothing wrong, it's, it's not bad because it's Western. Right. It's just but it's limited. Well, all theology is limited, for that matter. But they're uh, uh, let's see. How can I put this? Western theology has a tendency to gravitate towards the scriptures that are didactically constructed. Now, by that I mean. You know, here's what you do about this. A, B, C, one, two, three. Like. The, the epistles. Mm -hmm. in, in a lot of evangelical preaching, you find more preaching in the epistles than you do everywhere else, anywhere else in the Bible. Because you go, here are the three principles of this, here are the four ideas of that. And these rap artists are primarily rapping out of the epistles, like, you know, 116 click. I got, I got there. I'm, I'm a great fan of theirs, right. all that. And, and, you know, and, and, and it's great stuff. I mean, it's just terrific. And so I don't want to diminish that, but here's what 
the Western theology has not given us. It has not given us the ability to unpack the narratives. Now, when you look at good black preaching, one of the hallmarks of good black preaching historically has been the art of telling the story. And this is the postmodern time, and everybody's in the there. Everybody's got a narrative, right? You know, meta narratives are bad. You know, many narratives are good. Okay. If the rap artist, if the Christian rap or hip hop artist can, and I've been doing a lot of work in this area of unpacking, how do you unpack the narratives? I've done a lot of work for a long time and I would love to share this. Uh, if they can unpack the narratives, which that most of the Bible is in that form, learn how to unpack the narratives and apply them in today's world. Secondly, learn the ethical side of theology as well then Christian hip-hop would probably be just about the most powerful, prophetic phenomenon the world has ever seen wow. since the time of Jesus. I'll just put it that way. It has great potential. I mean, Christian hip-hop today is running with a governor, and it's, and it's phenomenal. It's doing a phenomenal job running with a governor. Now, if we could open that thing up and, and, and really equip these brothers on the art of doing theology in a holistic sense, I think, I think we might just see a great reformation, not just a revival, but a great reformation. So that's my little two cents worth. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much, Dr. Right. Ellis. This is Proceed with Carson Blog. Kobe Sutton, I'm out. Triple.